Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Canola School Series. I'm Kara Oosterhaus. I have here with me Clint Yerke of the Canola Council of Canada. How's it going today? Very good, Kara. Great day to be outside. Absolutely. Well, the wind's blowing, but yeah. hey, we're, we're, we're used to it. We're, we're surviving. Yeah. Um, so we are here today to talk about verticillium. Now, verticillium stripe specifically. Yep. Uh, producers have likely heard about verticillium wilt as well. Do you want to yep. kind of talk about what verticillium stripe is and why it's yeah. not wilt? Yeah, so uh, verticillium wilt is, is a well-known uh, global disease that affects a lot of different crops. It's caused by a, a fungus called verticillium dahlia, and it once it infects roots, it, it basically plugs up the plant's roots and plants wilt, and that, that's why it's, it's called that. What we're dealing with in canola, though, is, is caused by a different fungus. It's uh, verticillium longisporum, so it's not, it's, it's not the same species of pathogen, and it causes a different type of result. It, uh, it doesn't plug up the roots, it, it plugs up the stems, and as a result we see uh, a, a striping type of effect. We don't see the whole plant just wilt over anymore. So the um, internationally, this this pathogen is has been recognized as well. This is different, and so internationally they're they're calling it different. Some countries, I think, they call it verticillium stem striping. Here in Canada, we're calling it verticillium stripe. Okay, and that's the one that we found, or you guys found in Winnipeg area. Yeah, yeah. In 2014, uh, a field south of Winnipeg, uh, this disease was first observed in canola and uh, it was sent to a lab and very quickly uh, the industry reacted to it both working with the federal government with the CFIA and and the entire industry we found out that in fact this this pathogen is ubiquitous like it's it's from the east coast of, of the country to the west coast but unfortunately for Manitoba it's seems to be a little heavier there like uh, the, the soil infestation levels are, are much higher there than they are where we are here in, in Alberta however we are seeing it in Alberta correct yes. yeah yeah we are seeing it here for sure and um, it's it's but because it's it's something that's fairly new like for for the Manitobans I think that they're actually getting pretty good at, at recognizing it and how it looks different than black leg but it does have some features that make it uh, pretty easily to uh, to interpret it as, as black like earlier in, in, the, in the season. So talk about what it can actually do to your crop, like wh yeah. how does it impact it? Yeah, so it's, it's a fungus, it's in the soil, it's it's like a lot of the other soil diseases like Fusarium, um, uh, Rhizoctonia, Pythium, it infects roots, but what makes this one different is like uh, Fusarium in canola usually just infect, infects roots and causes root rots and things like that. This one, it starts growing up the stem immediately and then it starts plugging up the, uh, the vascular tissue, so the uh, the piping within a, a canola stem that moves water and nutrients up and down. And so once it fills that up with, with the fungal body, the mycelium, uh, that part of the plant dies off. And so then usually the, you'll, you'll see like a stripe on, on the plant, like where it gets into that part of the stem, it's just that whole part of the plant dies. So that's how it gets in. But And that's also what makes this disease kind of a bad thing compared to some of the other soil-borne diseases. Like most soil-borne diseases, they kind of stay with the root. This one being in the stem, it actually produces these hardened uh, fungal bodies at the end of the season called microsclerotia. It's, it's, when, we, when we hear the word sclerotia, I think we often think of sclerotinia. It, they produce sclerotias, in, which are fairly big chunks of, of mycelium. These are really tiny. These are not quite microscopic, but they are smaller than pepper. These microsclerotia, uh, they get, they, they're produced in the stem and then when we harvest this crop, uh, unfortunately those stems go through a combine operation and those microsclerotia get dispersed uh, quite widely. So that's the real challenge with this particular disease, unfortunately. So is that typically where you see the most spread is when it comes to harvest? Yeah, well, when we see the disease, the disease manifests itself, the, the symptoms most at, right at the, at, at harvest time. When the combines are in the field, that's when those microsclerotia are really produced, they've matured, and the plants start falling apart. So that's usually when we see the, the majority of the disease. When we're looking for other diseases like sclerotinia, clubroot, black, like we're usually looking at um, 
when the plants are, are kind of swathing time, that 60% seed color change, that's a little early to be looking for verticillium because it, it hasn't fully expressed like those microsclerosia type of symptoms. So, yeah. Control options, is there anything out there? No, unfortunately, um, the verticillium suite of diseases like verticillium wilt, verticillium stripe, um, there's no uh, uh, fungicides that work on it. Uh, we wish that the, that was the case. The only ray of hope that we kind of have right now is um, is in resistance. Uh, it's the, the research that's undergoing right now, we are seeing yield losses in Manitoba, unfortunately, um, but the it looks like there is some resistance in germplasm that's out there. In actual varieties, I don't know quite yet, um, but we're working with the industry to, to, to develop a, a rating system so that we can actually start telling folks when we do have real resistance coming along. But that might be our, our ray of hope, but we're, we're, we're gonna be a ways away from having uh, any, any real resistance to controlling this disease. And, and you know, we're not trying to fear monger here or anything, yeah. but any, any words of advice if people haven't seen verticillium, you know, like yeah. are we going down the same road that we did with club root or is yeah. it like? It, it is severe in Manitoba, but it's it's still new. Like there's a lot that we don't know. So last year it looked like it was a bad year, and maybe it has to do with the the environmental conditions that, that we saw last year in in that area. It was a fairly wet start, and the soils were warm, which seems to be the conditions that this pathogen really infects roots. So wet, warm soils um, were. The, the disease in most of Saskatchewan and, and Alberta, where we, it's, it's not really severe yet. So I, I think that we have a window of opportunity and, and hopefully the life science companies will have some good resistance that's coming down. Like I said, the, the germplasm screening was, was actually really promising that there looks like there is some good stuff, but when we're actually gonna see that in varieties that we can buy, hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Absolutely, okay, anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, just that this disease can be a little bit confusing with, with identification. I would really encourage any farmers or agronomists when you're out looking for pathogens at the end of the season, like try to actually figure out if you do have a disease in your field so that next time you're growing canola in that field or fields adjacent that you can choose the right varieties that are gonna deal with those diseases going ahead. To So yeah, definitely go through that operation, but if you need some help with, with identifying some of these things, uh, Check out some of our resources at the Canola Council. Uh, their Canola Encyclopedia has way more information than you'd ever want to see on verticillium, but it's it's all there, or our Canola Watch newsletter. We have lots of short little videos on how to identify it in the field too. Okay, perfect, thank you very much, Clint. Thank you, awesome.